Hey guys, welcome back to another video from Hoops Empire. In today's video, we're going to be discussing why I think the Celtics will not be extending Jalen Brown this summer or the next, and what it means for both Jalen and the Celtics. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and follow my socials in the description. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. What do you mean the Celtics aren't extending Jalen Brown? Is he leaving? I'm just going to make it clear right now that I do not believe Jalen is or will be leaving Boston, and what I know for sure is that I hope he never does. Jalen is a guy that has consistently improved in every single year of his career, with one of the better development arcs I have seen out of a player in recent memory. Nothing short of completely transformed from his original pre-draft analysis. Just to make sure no one thinks this is clickbait or anything, let me break down my reasoning as to why we won't see an extension between the Celtics and their young star. As the NBA's current collective bargaining agreement states, an extension can only span over five years, including the remaining time left on a player's given contract. Jalen currently has two years left on his deal, this upcoming 2022-23 season and the 2023-24 season. A player can get a pay raise in an extension up to 120% of the salary in the last year of their current contract. Jalen Brown is scheduled to make just over $28 million in the 2023-24 season, the last year of his contract. That means that following the extension rules, Jalen Brown would get a starting base salary of approximately $34 million for his three-year extension. However, 8% annual increases are also allowed for contract extensions. And based on Jalen's star caliber, I don't see why he wouldn't get it. This would mean year one of the extension would be $34 million, year two would be just under $37 million, and the final year, year three, would be approximately $40 million. This would make his extension, roughly three years, $111 million. Obviously not a bad payment at all, but he can, and in my opinion will, get more if he goes for the latter option waiting until he is an unrestricted free agent. If Jalen Brown does decide to forego his potential extension, he will have a truckload of money waiting for him in 2024-25 free agency. After the 23-24 season, he will be a 9-year veteran in the NBA, and he will be eligible for a max contract that is 30% of that year's salary cap. COVID put a bit of a wrench in the NBA salary cap increase over the last season or two, but we saw a very large cap jump from the year before, going from $112 million to $123 million. Via SpotTrack, the current projections for 2024 is a $136 million salary cap, meaning Jalen will be eligible for a base salary of $41 million, subject to change of course. This would mean if he waits until free agency, he can sign a 5-year, $205 million contract. Jalen would be foregoing a bit of financial security by not taking an extension, but speaking that he does not get injured or any other unforeseen circumstances occur, he can get a very lucrative contract if he waits, and if I was him, I would most definitely do so. However, where things get even more interesting is a potential Supermax extension. If Jalen Brown is able to make any of the three All-NBA teams, win Defensive Player of the Year, or win the League's Most Valuable Player Award, he will be eligible for a Supermax designated veteran contract, having completed at least seven or more years in the NBA, the minimum requirement of seasons played for said contract. The difference between a regular extension and a Supermax extension is the ability for a contract to span six seasons instead of five meaning if he did meet any of the accolade-based requirements such as All-NBA or MVP, he could sign a Supermax extension next offseason. A player that is eligible for a Supermax can get 35% of the projected salary cap in the first year of the extension, as well as 8% annual increases on top of that. This would mean his salary in the first year of his extension would be nearly $48 million, and the final season could be up to $65 million. In the end, it would be a roughly 5-year, $280 million contract. If he does not meet any of said accolade-based requirements in the 2022-23 season, but does meet them in the following season, before his current contract is up, he is still eligible for that same Supermax deal. However, it would have to be signed in free agency, as there would be no room left for an extension. And if he doesn't meet any of the requirements in the next two seasons, while he wouldn't be able to get a Supermax, 
he is still eligible for that five-year, $205 million deal. Regardless, signing the previously mentioned three-year, $111 million deal seems to have no purpose or incentive for Jalen, making an extension extremely unlikely. Yes, the Celtics will have a lot of money tied up in their core, but the front office has finally shown the willingness to go deep into the luxury tax. And having Jalen Brown's bird rights, allowing them to sign him deep into that luxury tax, I'd expect nothing less than an immediate signing the day free agency opens up in 2024. I mean, why wouldn't they? Jalen is an extremely devoted player who shows consistent hard work. He is ever improving as well. Although he saw some down statistics this year in points per game and some shooting splits, he was creating more for himself than he ever had before, a hurdle many players experience earlier in their careers. He was nothing short of the Celtics' best player in this year's NBA Finals. And let's not gloss over that last part there. He was an intricate piece, and in some games the best player on a team that had just made the NBA Finals, and he is just 25 years old. He has made four conference finals in his career to this point, and now has a finals berth under his resume. A lot of star guys don't reach that level of playoff success in their entire careers, let alone the first six years of it. Coming out of college at Cal, he had a loose handle, shot terribly from deep, and had quite a few holes in his game. He was projected to go early lottery, but many thought the Celtics took a real project piece at that third pick. Six years later, and he's entering the conversation for best player in his draft class. He has become a borderline elite shooter, and while his handle is still inconsistent, he has stretches of ball handling that are nothing like we ever saw in his college days. His defensive potential was always there, but most thought on draft night his ceiling was more of a two-way slasher, and he would never be much more than that. Now, he is a mid-range assassin, can shoot the ball exceptionally well from deep, has an improving handle, is an improving playmaker, and has all the great qualities he was projected to have on draft night. There are few two-way players in the league better than Jalen Brown. He does suffer from being in the shadow of Jason Tatum, but for the sake of both of them, developing JB even further as a more consistent creator would open up the floor for the Celtics, and would make life even easier on the Celtics superstar Jason Tatum. He has areas he can still work on, but again, he is nothing short of an all-star caliber player, and it would be a mistake to not give him this type of deal. What's the alternative? Getting rid of a guy who has shown loyalty and love for Boston, leaving his fellow Jay behind in hopes that they can bring in another star? Or replacing a star with a collection of lesser free agents? I don't think that's a message the Celtics would want to send to the league. I fully believe whatever shortcomings Jalen Brown has, he is fully aware of, and will spend each respective summer working on it. So in conclusion, the Celtics will probably not be able to extend Jalen Brown, but I still fully expect Jalen Brown to be a Celtics lifer. Thank you guys for watching the video, comment below if you have any cap related questions, like if you enjoyed, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We just hit 1800 subs, I'm hoping we can hit 2000 in the next couple months, but most importantly, have a good one.